Nobody made a rig. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. The original intention of this episode was to do a little bit of kit building, in particular the QRP Labs VFO. Now I started building this VFO as a part of a plan to build a SOTA rig and once again things have changed. Last night I was on the QRS slow morse net and I had a go at getting my AOE monster on the air and I've done some QSOs on this transceiver, had a lot of fun building it. As you can see, it's got a receive and a transmit VFO dial, and the concept is a great concept. Unfortunately, my execution of it was less than good. In fact, it was utter rubbish. And the selectivity on this particular transceiver, really it's a receiver transmitter, is really woeful. So I could just leave it be, and for the sake of posterity, have it staring me in the face to remind me of how bad my previous efforts were. But I really would like to have this case sitting on my bench and be using it. So the plan is to take that VFO that I'm going to be building and put it into this device. So I can rescue these uh, capacitors that I have in here. There are air variable capacitors, so they'll be great to have for other projects. And uh, the plan also is to take the prob rock and use that for the transmit section. So I'll have channelized transmit, which was the original intention for the prob rock in previous projects. And I'm going to have a, a digital VFO happening on this side here. So it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully I can use some of the ret receive transmit circuitry and whatnot that's in here. Certainly a lot of the casework has been done for me. And after the VFO is finished, I still have to finish a receiver module from QRP Labs. So I'll be teaming up the QRP Labs receiver module and VFO. So I am certain that Hans Summers has done a way better uh, job of designing than, than I ever would have managed. And uh, it's all on one circuit board, so there won't be the bird's nest of wiring that I ended up with in this thing. But, you know, the whole process of building this from scratch taught me a lot about RF design and what not to do. And really, the only way you can make strides forward, I think, is to, to have a risk-taking attitude to all this good stuff. So without further ado, we will uh, head off to the test bench and start the build on that VFO. Just so you can get some idea of uh, how diabolically bad this situation is. <laughs> get a load of that. It's it's a bit of a mess. But what's great about it, of course, is that I have actually managed to have two-way QSOs on this uh, transceiver. Interstate, nothing DX, but uh, still over thousands of kilometers. So I am very, very happy that this little two-watt unit has uh, gotten me where it has gotten me, and I certainly had a lot of fun building it. But it's only on onwards and upwards from this point onwards, and I will be doing more of this really home rolled stuff. I do love doing this stuff because it's more about my my decisions rather than just putting stuff into a printed circuit board. And the plan is to, um, once I get this thing finished with the um, QRP Labs modules that I purchased, is to get a five volt push to torque and use it on this wonderful QRP Labs. So there's a, uh, there'll be an, a video at the end screen of this video if you haven't seen it, uh, QRP Afterburner. This does 50 watts. So I'll be able to get 50 watts out of this unit on 40 meters. And I think it'll be a great little uh, Q, QRP transceiver. And when I wanna make it uh, 50 watts, I'll be able to do that with it as well. So come along for the journey and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at how, how this all pans out. Okay folks, upcoming videos. We are going to have me building a variety of kits. I have a receiver module kit. I have a polyphase network for uh, this. The receiver module will give me an IQ output via a TALO detector. And this is going to remove one of those outputs to give me single sideband. And this is the bandpass filter kit for that receiver. So that's gonna be a receiver kit that's gonna be built. In today's episode, we are gonna build the VFO signal generator. And um, that comes with an SI5351 synth module and the encoder and all the software and whatnot that needs to go with that VFO. 
One of the problems with this VFO module is I don't think it has uh, the option of a CW offset. So down the track, I'll be discussing why that's an issue because I actually want to use this as part of a transceiver. I think I found a way around it. So stick around for upcoming episodes to watch the, uh, the diabolical disaster unfold as it always does. But this episode, we're going to get this VFO going and um, see how it, uh, it functions. And by the end of this, we will hopefully have a working VFO that I can use as part of a transceiver project. Let's go. In suburbia, uh, yeah, I've noticed Off we go. it's crept up here. Um, I'll be right back, boys. So I am in full Mr. Bean mode. Uh, it hasn't gone as well as it should. If that is looking weird to you form factor wise, that is because this LCD display is supposed to be level and on the back of this to make it a nice compact unit. Of course, bright red uh, text says, please make sure you put the connector on the wrong side as it will be very difficult to remove. And I've decided not to remove it. Change the form factor of this. Hopefully it still works. I think it's, it's plugged in the correct way around and I will attach this to the top cover of my enclosure. It's gonna be bigger than it needs to be, but that's not a problem. This is what the, I said it was an EEPROM, I think earlier in the video, but it's actually the microcontroller. That's going in this, uh, I think it's an 80 mega, but it's going in this, it was supposed to go in this dip um, plug. And of course I managed to stuff that up to, you know, how do you stuff up a dip plug? I managed to do it, lost the pin. And so um, I've actually just soldered the actual microcontroller in so hopefully that hasn't destroyed it so the plan is now to apply power to this i had a three pin regulator that i was using in a breadboard and because it's been plugged in and out so many times the legs were very weak and while i was trying to apply it to the board i don't know if you can see it there but there's some dead pins there from the uh, three pin regulator um the pin broke off and I, could, I didn't have enough pin left to actually solder to, so I was left without a five volt regulator. So we went off to a bit of retail therapy at JCAR Electronics, and I had a $10 credit, so it felt like it was cheaper than it really was. And uh, got some nine, three pin nine volt regulators and five volt regulators, which you know I'm using all the time. Some headers, and I think I also got a um, 3.5 um, millimeter stereo jack, which I'm going to use. Uh, perhaps to make my AOE Monster um, a 50 watt transmitter using that new QRP Labs in uh, the previous video. QRP Labs amplifier. Anyway, rambling on, um, need to get on with it. So we'll get that um, three pin regulator attached and get some power to this and we'll see if it actually works. Hip, hip, hooray. Even with all the stuff ups that I was just mentioning, We've managed to power it up. It's got 12 volts coming in, three pin regulator installed ugly style with some electrolytics to clean up any ripple that might be there. And uh, this is now looking like it's going to work. Hopefully, I'm gonna get in the instructions now and just see if we can uh, see if we've got an output. Well, we've hooked up our scope and we've got it in the measure function. You can see down here, frequencies at around seven megs. And if we switch off, uh, measure so we can actually see the uh, waveform. There it is, there 6.999, and it is working like it should. We have a VFO that works. Happy days! And uh, this is monitoring it on the uh, Hemi's Light 2 we threw uh, Thetis. Well, thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. The plan is with that VFO to put it into another project. Perhaps I'm going to improve my AOE Monster or it might go into another design. Not 100% sure yet. Got to finish off the receiver module and see how that performs. And then that might inspire me onwards. Seven to three, and I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.